Class G airspace starts at the surface until reaching Class E airspace except for airports where their airspace reaches the surface. Class G airspace is uncontrolled airspace that mostly reaches 1,200 feet above ground level, but sometimes reaches up to 700 feet above ground level. On rare occasions, it can climb as high as 14,500 feet MSL due to restrictions from other airspace and navigation station limitations such as signal issues caused by terrain. Most of the time, pilots will fly above Class G instead of being so close to the ground where obstacles are and where pilots have less altitude to work with to land the plane if an issue occurs. Since fewer airplanes fly in Class G airspace, the minimums are less restrictive. VFR minimums for Class G airspace also differ between day and nighttime. During the day, the minimums are one mile visibility flying clear of clouds. At night, the minimums are 3 miles visibility and 1,000 feet above clouds, 500 feet below clouds, and 2,000 feet to the side of clouds. The exception to this is if you are flying in the pattern where visibility can be less than 3 miles but must be at least 1 mile. You also must fly clear of clouds in these conditions. To understand Class G airspace a little further, let's look at an example. Here on the chart we have Smith Center Airport surrounded by the magenta ring. As we learned in the Class E video, Class E starts 700 feet AGL within the border. Class G starts at the surface until it reaches Class E at 700 feet AGL. Outside of the border, Class G starts from the surface up to 1200 feet AGL, where Class E then takes over. Since Osborne Airport does not have any border around it, Class G starts at the surface and rises to 1,200 feet AGL, where once again, Class E then starts. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.